¿Qué tal chicos? Bienvenidos para una nueva entrevista de esta jornada número 8 de la LEC Y estamos pues con otro vencedor del día, que en este caso con Tore, support de Excel Y vamos rápidamente con él, first of all Tore, uh, thank you very much for your time, for your kindness And congratulations, because you're keeping on this winning streak mm -hmm. Thank you Drive me a little bit through the game, because despite it was like from both perspectives like a slow game But mm -hmm. you guys, uh, from the middle game, uh, starting to play around those neutral objectives like or targets like the dragon, like Nasha, you managed to achieve that win, even you have to that kind of final rush on your herd with that some kind of uh, race. Uh, drive me a little bit to that. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think both teams were choking a bit. You know, we're playing really scared. We're not really contesting everything. Like from a lot of other teams, you know, or the good teams, right? They fight and contest a lot of early game objectives. But we're just kind of giving each other it and like just moving on, right? And I think we gave them some free dragons. They had like a two dragon lead, and then uh, I guess we have to start feeling a bit scared for the soul, right? Mm -hmm. And there was also like a, a really bad herald play from us, which we fell a bit behind from. But I think like as soon as the game or like the game went on, right? And I think they started dropping a lot of mm -hmm. like waves, right? And we realized that in game and kind of thought about like them, like how we wanted to progress the game, right? And I think we got like a good sense of how we wanted to play mm -hmm. and. It became a lot better for us, I think, as the as the game went on, and I think we played a lot better than them in team fights, and that was like I guess the difference maker in this game because we got a lot of uh, of freebies. And I guess at the end they were uh, joking a bit and didn't realize the the midway, right? So we just thought we could go for the end because yeah, we get to, we get to cancel them and we have Nash right, and we we just end really fast. Mm -hmm. Despite that winning streak, you are you really are right now. I think it's your third win on a row. Is it? Is it? I think a third or fourth, yeah. Yeah, yeah a third or fourth. You still, guys, seems a little bit hesitating, both teams, but especially the XL. This is because you guys have been, since the beginning of the season, playing a little bit low, playing for that scaling, or this is something that you need a little bit more to win to get that step and playing a little bit more aggressive? Mm, yeah, I mean, as I said, I think maybe we're just struggling with uh, playing a bit more aggressive. I think the good teams are, are good at that, right? I think. That's the thing we're missing a bit. I think those that, that separates us from the rest, right? Like our ability to turn on our aggression from a low one and fight a lot. I think that's a thing we've been working on. Mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, for us, we've been only winning against, I would say, like the lower tier teams or the teams that are not at the top of the table. Mm -hmm. I guess to to make playoffs or like to get high up in the standings, we have to be able to take games off those teams, which we are not doing right now. So, mm -hmm. so it's a problem we're facing. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit more about the team and not the game, this season you guys have Dan and you have Chocolate uh, instead of Special and instead of uh, Kedril. How mm -hmm. do you feel? How is the atmosphere inside from the team? Because Excel is always a, a team that have given a lot of chances to new guys and it seems like a roster that it's always kind of recycling itself with young promises mm -hmm. and young players. How does it feel for you that right now you as a guy who has been playing a little bit more than the rest mm -hmm. of the guys. Do you feel like a leader of the team? Do you think that the guys need that role on the team from you? Uh, well, for me, I, I mean, it's uh, nice to be able to, to stay on the team for that long. I think for like, playing with Patrick as well, I really like. I think uh, it sucks to have to change players like every split. Like we had the change in spring last year and in summer and again now in the spring this year. But uh, I mean, we're changing players for a reason. I think we're, we're, we're doing it because you We don't think it works the way it is mm -hmm. and hopefully now like it's gonna work out and i think it is right now we're on a very good trend and i feel like we are the, the way we're playing the game and the way we're practicing it feels a lot better and I, i have high hopes for the new players and like i feel we're fitting together pretty well mm -hmm. and i guess like for the leader ability it doesn't really have to be that me or patrick because we stayed the longest right have to mm -hmm. be like leaders but like It kind of comes to that, right? Where one of us uh, is more, de is the more experienced player, right? And sometimes maybe rookies feel a bit uh, like nervous in some games, and it's our job then to kind of pick it up and make them feel better, right? Mm -hmm. Now you guys have been uh, playing some official games together. What would you say is the m main difference from the from this roster? from the the previous one it's a it's a mechanical step it's a way of understanding better how to play the game it's a better it's a better understanding of the macro talk to me a little bit mm -hmm. I, mean, i think we, we just fit better uh together i think we have a, a better synergy it feels 
better just to play with them. I don't know how to explain, but I guess the personality difference is it's a big uh, big thing. And for Dan, like he's been a pro for a long time, even though he hasn't played in LCS. He's been close to doing it, or uh, in LEC, I mean. And I think he's a very experienced player, and I think he brings a lot to the team. And for Chocolat as well, he's, uh, um, I guess, an aggressive player. Uh, we needed some balls to our team, so I think he really like added this and he's trying to make us play a lot more aggressive. And the same for Dan. Mm -hmm. and I feel like they, they just fit really well in that. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit more about, about the game and the meta, this is the first week you guys are playing on 11.11.3. Uh, at the at the beginning of the season, before LEC LEC began, I had the chance to to talk with some supports like Dreads, like Geyser, talking about a little bit the meta of the off season. They all of them agree about that the support role was the one who changed the less about the meta, mm -hmm. the, the the itemization, the way to play the map. Do you have that uh, different expectations from into this new patch to have new picks, or it's just, it's going to remain just the same? Mm, yeah, I mean, for the patch that is now and previous, it doesn't change that much, right? You're still playing the, the tank supports. There are some range supports here and there, mm -hmm. but yeah, not that much. There was a time where Moonstone and uh, the staff were a real big thing, and people played a lot of range supports, but I don't. I hope at least it's not going to go back to how it was like in 2017 when there was like Lulu Janna meta, first person to build Arden wins the game or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like now I'm happy with the meta, and I hope it it like evolves into a bit different because if it stays like this for a long time, then it's going to get boring, I guess, for mm -hmm. for players or viewers as well, right? If there's only going to be a certain amount of champions, like I hope Riot finds a way to bring back some champions that have not been played that much. But I feel like there's there's a lot of champions that are possible, but seeing like some new patches feels like they're trying to kind of change that a bit, but uh, not looking too much into... The, the the next patch until like we're playing on it so mm -hmm. next year we'll see maybe there'll be some some new picks did you feel comfortable on that meta on engaging or having that that uh that role of initiating mm -hmm. the, of initiating the the aggressive map? because i remember you have some synergy with with sexy on splice in in worlds to in, in worlds 2019 but mm -hmm. since you step into the actual roster i feel you like this guy is still trying to do the same but uh, he needs to adapt that style on the XTEL. Do you feel like, mm -hmm. do, did you really achieve that? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, for me, it's been, mm -hmm. I guess my, or like for support, right? It's uh, it's a good skill to have to know how to engage well mm -hmm. and how to do it, uh, like when to do it, right? So I think that's maybe something I haven't been too good at recently. I think if, on some champions, it's really easy, like Rakan, maybe Alistar as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes you have to get into a good position, kind of tell your team, how to play and I guess um, it's been a struggle right because we're not playing aggressive enough mm -hmm. so you as the engager maybe has some some fault in that and yeah I guess it's something we've been working on a lot and I think it's mm -hmm. showing a bit like if some games we're playing a lot more aggressive than we would be two three weeks ago four weeks ago whatever mm -hmm. in the preseason so I feel like it's it's going a good step okay so last question for me it's a uh, two side questions and I need you to give me one name for for in each each section uh, mm -hmm. First question or first part of the question would be, who is in this case a support that you love to play against him? Because for some kind of meta, uh, it doesn't matter what it gives you. This guy, the way he plays, the way he understands the map, pushes you to play your hundred percent. The this mm -hmm. guy, this guy, you say, okay, today I'm I'm facing this guy, and this guy is gonna make me push to the to the limit to to win the game. Who will be that? Uh, Hilisang for sure. The guy has been uh, playing his style or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. playing well for so many years, and I guess I have a lot of respect for him. It's always fun to play against him because, yeah, he's, he has a player. Is he has a, like his own play style, and I think it's really interesting and mm -hmm. it's fun to play against. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other side of the coin would be, and it doesn't need to be a support player. It can be, but uh, it can be a guy from an internal role. Who would be the guy? It can be from competitive and it can be from solo queue. I give you this chance. Uh, who is the guy? You, the the moment you see his name on the enemy team, your first thought is, okay, I would like to erase this guy from the enemy team because this guy, I, I hate to play against him because, I don't know, he dodges everything, he punishes bot lane, he punishes you every move. Who would that be? I mm, think it's probably Caps, like from LSD at least. And uh, I guess in Solo as well. He likes to... Uh... 
play some fun champions here and there. But yeah, for LEC or like competitive, he's been really good for so long time, mm -hmm. and uh, he always finds a way to to get me good in the game. And uh, it's not so nice to to get stomped like that. <laughs> okay, so that that's that's everything for me. That this is the last question for me. Thank you very much again for your time, for your kindness, and congratulations again for the win. And hope you to have you back here pretty soon. Thank you. Y a vosotros chicos, muchas gracias por ver esta entrevista, espero que os haya gustado, le dais un buen like, le dais un buen RT y nos vemos en la siguiente, ¿vale? ¡Hasta luego!